continuing with the analog discovery and this class AB amplifier that I built for demonstration purposes in part one, I've made a few changes to the circuit. I'd like to show you those and explain why I made those changes. Down here is the circuit. You'll recognize that it's basically the same circuit as before, a complementary symmetry output made up of an NPN PNP transistor with diodes to set the bias voltages so that the uh, each transistor is right on the verge of conducting. An op amp at the input primarily to provide isolation from the generator that provides a gain of about two and then of course there is some loss of voltage gain in this stage. There's a, a very large power gain in this stage because it's driving a very low impedance or at least in this case only 100 ohms. Normally as I've said this would be the speaker and would be in the order of 8 to 10 ohms or perhaps even as low as 4. Some of the changes I've made I put a potentiometer of 10k with the arm tied to minus 5 volts between these two pins. These are the offset adjust pins on a 741. They allow you to, to zero out the effect of offset bias. In keeping with that I've also put a 2.2k in the positive or non-inverting input to ground to stabilize that impedance to 2.2k that helps to isolate any changes in impedance of the generator. And then I've also placed a capacitor between the generator and this point. Now it's marked 10 microfarads and that's the design value. Right now I have 4.7 mics in there and I'll show you that and then we'll come back and go back to the 10 mic. The uh, basically the amplifier is the same. So now let's take a look at this amplifier on the uh, network analyzer of the analog discovery. But first I should point out that one of the things I did is adjusted this pot until this point is essentially zero volts with no uh, input. I'm doing that to eliminate any DC on the output and therefore the only signal on the output will be the AC result of the output of this op amp. And when you do that what you are doing is you're incorporating both the offsets in this generator, I mean in this op amp, as well as any offsets in this circuit as well. So I put a meter on here, uh, then adjusted this pot until that meter read zero volts with no input. Now I'm going to shift over and hook up the or turn on the analog discovery and demonstrate how the network analyzer works with this circuit. Here is the network analyzer of the analog discovery. Once again, the yellow line represents the input to the circuit. The blue line represents the gain and you see that up to about 12 hertz. Uh, it's 5 hertz on the left. This is 10 hertz. So up to about 12 hertz the circuit actually has a voltage loss. Down below is the phase and you see that at about 5 hertz the phase is about 72 degrees of phase shift. The phase shift drops to essentially zero through most of the passband of this particular circuit and then at around 70 or 80 kilohertz it starts to drop off again. This is 10 kilohertz here and you see that the change in phase corresponds with the change in gain at this point. Now I said earlier that I have a 4.7 microfarad input capacitor and that's what's causing this uh, not as good low frequency response. You may recall in part one I, was, I had the input DC coupled 
So of course the gain would be flat from DC all the way out until the op amp and the AB uh, amplifier, the complementary symmetry amplifier, uh, frequency response begins to fall off. By using a coupling capacitor, and I did that so that I could set the output to zero volts without having the generator impedance affect the output offset of the uh, circuit. But putting in a capacitor causes the low frequency response to decline. So now what I'm going to do is put in a 10 microfarad capacitor instead of the 4.7. And just remember here that the response is below unity, above uh, to a point above 10 hertz, about 12 hertz. And now you can see the input low frequency response is substantially better. It went from about a 12 hertz crossover point down to about 7 hertz. Now, of course, you could continue to increase the size of that input capacitor at some point, but of course, most speakers will not uh, operate below about 10 hertz or 5 hertz. So most of the gain that you use below that is actually wasted anyway. But that's a personal preference and some people prefer more bass and some people prefer a relatively flat response and so on. So those are matters more of personal taste. But nonetheless, by adjusting the size of that input capacitor, and I'll show you that again on the schematic in a second, you get a shift in the low frequency response. So instead of the frequency response being unity at 12 hertz, it's now unity at about 7 hertz, the crossover point. The capacitor that I've been changing is this one, marked 10 microfarads here. It is the series capacitor between the generator and the non-inverting input of the op amp. So now I'd like to move on and do some additional tests on this same circuit. Now I'm using a new piece of software that works with the analog discovery. It's called the Audio Analyzer Suite. The copy that I got was, uh, I believe, developed by, at any rate I got it from, a website called The Stuff Made. If you just put in a Google search of Analog Discovery Audio Analyzer Suite, S-U-I-T-E. You'll find this uh, site among the ones that uh, are listed. I'm currently using it on the Analog Discovery 1, but I understand it works on the Analog Discovery 2. Now, some of the functions of this suite duplicate functions that are already available. For example, this is the frequency response that the, I will call it from here on, the suite versus the analog discovery. So when I refer to analog discovery, I'll be talking about the waveforms software. When I talk about the suite software, I'll be talking about this. So this is the frequency response of the same amplifier, the little test circuit that we've been working with. So now let's try, uh, well, let me, let me do a run for you so that you can see how it works. The <clears throat> one thing that I noticed about this software is that it does require you to change the input. If you have your analog discovery set up to use the network analyzer, uh, you already understand that the scope channel 1 is connected to the input and the scope channel 2 is connected to the output of the thing that you are trying to measure. Well with the analyzer suite you have to change that. Scope channel 2 is not used and scope channel 1 is used on the output. So in other words you can't use the same configuration for both. 
Another thing that I noticed is I had been using the power supplies in the analog discovery to power the circuit. And you may recall in part one I featured that as a new possibility with the analog discovery too. Well, it turns out that I cannot find a way to turn on the power supplies of the analog discovery without loading waveforms. And if you load waveforms, you cannot run the analyzer suite. In other words, they're mutually exclusive. You have to get out of the waveforms program before you get into the analyzer suite. Now, I frankly expected that, but what it has meant is that I have had to uh, change to my own power supplies. Let me show you that. Here is the circuit, and you notice up there what I've had to do is use my own 5 volt supplies because I can no longer use the analog discovery. Now that also prompted me to change to the analog discovery 1 partly because I wanted to make sure that the suite would work with that unit as well. I'm told that this is the unit that it was developed on and at some point I will also switch over and see how well it works with the analog discovery 2. So let's try a couple of other features of this particular analyzer suite. Here is the curve using the analyzer suite of total harmonic distortion versus frequency. You see on the left 5 Hertz and on the far right is 20 kilohertz. This is 1% total harmonic distortion. The way this appears to work is it takes the spectra of the signal, calculates the ratio between the sum of all of these peaks and the fundamental, which is of course the proper way to do total harmonic distortion. In the right hand lower pane you see the scope and what it appears to be doing is taking samples at each of these points and you can then go back and look at each of these samples. So for example this is the spectrum at that point at that frequency. Over here is the spectrum at that frequency and on the right is the actual output uh, that is the the red line is the waveform generator's output. So uh, I'm going to want to check a little bit and see what's going on here because one thing I may be doing is overdriving this little amplifier. It's really not intended to uh, put out a lot of power. The and, and this analyzer suite is actually intended to work uh, well. It'll work up to uh, I think any wattage you want as long as you have a dummy load that will handle it. Uh, it has an adjustment to the uh, attenuation factor which I'll let you read the website and watch the videos by the stuff made on that. Uh, it just has to do with the fact that if you put an 8 ohm dummy load on an amplifier and you drive it much above 50 watts you'll get more than 25 volts across the uh, the dummy load and the analog discovery is limited to 25 volts so so he has provided he the developer has provided the ability to put in a voltage divider on the output so that what the analog discovery sees is a ratio so for example a 2 to 1 voltage divider would mean that the analog discovery sees half of the voltage across the load and you can adjust that but once again, I refer you to the website of The Stuff Made and also a series of videos that he has done on the Analyzer Suite. At this point, I think I'm going to wrap up uh, part two and move on to doing some other uh, analyzer tests. What I would like to do next is move on and look at the Sencor PA81 uh, power amplifier analyzer. I've mentioned that in previous videos, but I think now might be an appropriate time to uh, show you how that works and how a analyzer of that type can be used uh, effectively in measuring audio amplifiers. So for now I'm going to end this 
segment. And rather than call the next part, part three, I'm going to give it a separate title of the PA-81. But I hope you've enjoyed this, and I intend to do some additional videos on this Analog Discovery Audio Analyzer Suite in the future. It looks like a nice piece of software. Uh, it appears to be uh, downloadable for free. At any rate, I was able to download a copy and get it working on my Windows 7 computer. I'm going to now try it on a Windows 10 computer and also on an Analog Discovery 2 and a bunch of other things, but that's in the future. In the meantime, have a nice day.